I can't play an instrument, I can't even whistle in tune. I love rock and roll. It's easy to absorb, it's easy to dance to, it's exciting. My full name is Lionel Morrell Digby. I brought up in the hotel industry and then fell into the music industry. First of all, was liking rock and roll, which became a business. Well, it all happened in 1956 when I left the army, having served in London as a household cavalry, going to the skiffle clubs and that, coming home in December and there was nothing in, in the bay for live music other than dance bands. And I met up with a chappie called Johnny Harris, who f had just formed a combo called the Johnny Harris Combo, and they had nowhere to play. So I went out and I found the co-op hall in Torquay, which was quite a nice size hall tucked away at the back of Union Street. We called it the Tuesday Rock Club. It got so popular, we opened it on a Saturday. That got popular, so then we started going Paynton, Brixton, Totnes, Exmouth, Exeter, Plymouth, and gradually building up a whole series of dance halls. First of all, we were using local bands, gradually bigger names, the Stones, the Kinks, the Cream, the Who, in the bigger halls like the Town Hall. Most big names played Torquay Town Hall in their career. But I think one of the most memorable appearances of a band was, was Eric Clapton in Cream. Brilliant performance. At Torquay Town Hall, they performed the first ever live appearance. They were three superstars, and it was the first time really superstars had come together from different bands. And I, and I got to know Eric quite well because he came down earlier than that with the Yardbirds. After Cream, he came back again with Cream. Then he came with Delaney and Bonnie. Same thing with Derek and the Dominoes. First ever dates at Torquay Town Hall. It was, Torquay Town Hall became a major venue in the country for big names. We could get 1,000 or 1,500 in there on a good day, 2,000. <laughs> and there were so many different types of bands. You had, you had your rock and roll, then you got your hard rock, and you got your rom new romance, and you got all these different things, branches coming off rock and roll. But it all had the same excitement than that. Um, the biggest story really was, um, because I had this circuit down here, uh, North Country bands used to like, come down in the summer, and I had a phone call one from Brian Epstein, who was saying he'd got this new band, but they, they were the top band in Liverpool. So I said, fine, what they called, called the Beatles. I said, it's 100 pound a week, Brian. He said, I want 150 a week from them. I said, Brian, look, it's 100 pound or forget it. So he forgot it. <laughs> I, when, it, when the record came out and went to number one, I rang up to that band of yours, I'll take some dates on it. He said, a thousand pound a night. I said, you, you, a thousand pound, you must be joking. I said, I'm only paying the cream and, and the kinks and that 600 pound a night, and they got a string of hits. You know, you won't get, you won't get a thousand pound a night for a one hit band. How wrong can you be? <laughs> I did get to meet them later. I met them down in Plymouth and had an evening with them. They signed an LP, their first LP, they signed it for me. And that's now hanging in the Oslo Hard Rock Cafe, framed, and it says, presented by the Beatles to um, promoter Lionel Digby at their Plymouth concert, 1964. I suppose the most fun thing was Screaming Lord Such. He came down to the car pool in 1957, straight from the Two Eyes coffee bar. He was a character, he was a showman, and, and we did some daft things together. So it's really hard to say what was a highlight when you've done all those many years, I went from 1950s to 1982. To take a highlight from it all, they were all, I suppose really most of it was a highlight. Well, Torbay Rock, as it said, it's all about Torbay. It's just, it's just how rock and roll came to Torbay and how it functioned. But this is basically all about the main bands that came here, the local bands that formed and came up. And what I've got on display is some of the posters. Unfortunately, over the years, some of the posters are gone, got lost got stolen, sold a few, um, but we got quite a good selection of posters and photographs and artifacts on display. It's all about Torbay Rocks. <laughs>